I wake up in the morning, feeling so alive Got that fire burning deep inside Got a heart so hard to reach for the sky I'm chasing dreams, no time to waste time I'm on a mission Shadows cast before the light Arise unyielding, ready to ignite Above the tempest roar I stand Within her flames I command From the embers past emerge Fearless, unbroken, I surge No retreat, no fears, embrace In life's melody I find my As my guiding star, I chase the dawn, I've come so far. In the silence where doubts reside, I summon courage with each stride. Through the echoes of past defeat, I rise again, my victory sweet. Back trade group, where you at? Drop the beat. Yo, good morning, guys. 
Good morning, good morning. Alpha in the building, loving my music. <laughs> What's up, everyone? We got retail sales coming up in three minutes. Let me know where you guys are watching from. Let me know. Good morning in the chat. What are you trading? Have you liked the stream yet? Jeremy coming in first. Good morning. What's up, man? Wes, what's up? What's up? Moaning. <laughs> Pablo, good morning. Pocket, good morning. Danny, good morning. Good morning. Basang, what's up? What's up? Wesley, we got two Wes's in the chat. Good morning. Good morning. Wes, Euro, Dance Pop. Yeah, we got, so, we got a good variety today. We're... We're combating the copyright. <laughs> what's up? What's up? We get start here in a little bit. What's up? What's up? All right, so if you guys are taking a look at MNQ, we're having a nice little pump this morning, uh, pre-New pre, pre -New York market. We got retail sales, like I said, in about three minutes. Um, we have a couple little levels here that we could come retrace to before we potentially try to try to attempt to retrace this midnight open. Again, if you guys are new here, I trade these midnight retracements. Uh, I use statistics and data to back up my business decisions. I am not an expert trader by any means. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not licensed to tell you individually where to get in and out of the market. So if you come here, just asking me where my stop loss is. I'm going to tell you to go watch my videos because I'm not sitting here giving trade signals. Uh, with all that being said, we got some levels here that I think price could kind of come to and liquidity could come to and retrace before we try to get into this midnight retracement. Again, we have a 67.6% .6 probability. And again, this is not a predictor. This is not something that's just a magic eight ball. What this is doing is this is measuring every single session on the chart here with this midnight retracement. And between the hours of 8 to 11, 15 a.m. EST, every single morning, Monday through Friday, any day that's a tradable day of the week, it is analyzing on my one hour chart going all the way back to 2.8 years of data. That's why it says number of sessions, 1,042. I mean, it's tra it's it's measured 1,042 days without me using replay mode or going back and even further. Um, so right here, just a snapshot, 2.8 years of data where it is literally just counted. How many times have we retraced a midnight open and how many times have we not in this allotted time? Now you can see one thing that's very interesting that i lo love to tell my discord about what's up everyone let me know in the chat i see we got 57 people watching let me know where you're watching from let me know what you're trading what asset you're trading and uh, i'll get to all your comments here in a little bit so one thing that i tell a lot of people and this is something very very unique to my model is if we do not retrace a midnight open in the previous session the likelihood of retracing to this midnight open becomes even higher if we do it two days in a row the third day is even hot. Like it's the probabilities increase the more that we have a zero retracement day because we have the 67.6% .6 edge already on our side. And when these kind of happen outside of that statistic, the next session or the next two sessions, right? They, they become even more um, probable to retrace. In addition to, we haven't even created a retracement at all uh, since we made that midnight open. We're now potentially forming uh, an entry here, but we have news. I never enter on news candles. So if this if this does close out as a bearish distribution, I'm not going to be taking this. Now, for those of you that are looking here, what this is showing me, okay? So this is not a blind buy and sell indicator. This is my own custom built indicator that I made. You can see here if I double tap on it, my Wolf Suite Entry Aid. I call it my entry aid because this is the last level of confluence that I need in order to see the leptocurtic distribution of price where it goes in my favor. And what I mean by that, uh, and I always love to reiterate this for the people that are kind of new to my stream, is every distribution, every price, I don't care how you trade, what model, doesn't matter. 
every way that price moves, there is a distribution. There's a give and a take. We as traders try to get in as early as possible before any type of distribution that we're looking for happens, right? Now, I'm not, I never answer on news candles. This is that little red symbol that you see here. That is a bearish distribution. So this would have been my entry given it's literally any other candle but the news candle. I, I will enter a minute before, two minutes before, five minutes before, but I will never enter on news candles. They're very deceiving. They can cause you to have this giant purge this way and then you just rebalance. I don't want to do that. I'll just wait for another entry. Or if it's just a no trade day, it's just a no trade day. Um, but we as traders want to get in before this distribution happens. So what this shows me is it shows me that distribution that is about to happen in the market, okay? So this is not just a blind, I'm, not, I'm buying every single time there's a green wolf or I'm shorting every single time there's a, a red wolf. This is the last confirmation I need to enter in the window that gives me the highest probability using a data point that has a high probability, using statistics that give me a high probability, adding everything on top of each other to give me a confirmed entry. So that is why I call it the entry aid and why it does aid in my entries. Um, and everyone in my pack trade group has access to this. Again, I'm not trying to sell you. These streams are not here to sell you. You do not need to trade this way using my indicator. You can literally just use footprints. These just give you a bit more accurate reading on the market uh, when, you're, when you're scalping these retracements like this. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. What's up? Good morning. And you guys are seeing this happen live right now. This is why I never really trade. This is why I never trade off of news candles or get into a news candle trade. Because you can see, I mean, price just loves to rebalance uh, to pre-news pre prices. And it's just, it's a very common thing. So I never want to take a short or a long or anything off of the direct news candle that happens. So this is why we don't, I don't like doing this. You guys can do whatever you want to do. Eight people watching. Nice. What's up? What's up, Wes? Uh, if I could change to Wes. Oh, you're Wes. Okay. Sometimes I get your guys' Discord names mixed up. you haven't yet if you do get value from this stream make sure you drop it a like go to my twitter give the give the announcement a retweet actually i haven't even let twitter know we're live yet so let me go over here and retweet this do have some areas that we could kind of come and this is what I said if you if you're just tuning into this stream this is what I was saying that we could experience right is we could come up here retrace this liquidity come up here and retrace this liquidity and again this is why I don't care about anything else on the charts because why why are these levels specific because this is letting me know there's bearish liquidity right here these footprints these impulsive wicks on the hourly time frame this is letting us know that there is objective sell pressure, right? There's, there's no if, ands, or buts about it. This is objective buy and sell pressure that I know is going to cause when price gets up to that level, price is going to cause some sort of sell pressure and price loves to go to the path of least resistance. So once it chops around and creates business and exchanges orders in a footprint, either it breaks through it and then it heads to the next footprint or it rejects it and goes to the data set, goes to wherever the data is statistically 
proven to go to, which in this case would be the catalyst for the midnight retracement. So now you're seeing us break out of this footprint, and now we have context on where price is most likely going to go next, which is right here. And look what happened. Price impulsively, aggressively moved up here. And the farther that price moves up into these liquidity footprints, the higher the probability is for me to get a short off of the retracement. So that way, when price melts through these and price gets overextended above this little level here, aka the midnight open, once price overextends above this midnight open, we have a potential retracement opportunity. Because price does not, ladies and gentlemen, price does not just move in a straight line. Price will only move in a higher highs, higher lows, lower lows, lower highs, or a consolidation. Right? That's the only way price moves. And how we know where price is most likely going to shift is when one of these important levels are broken. That's it. So when you have one of these important levels that are broken, in combination with market structure, in combination with data to tell you objectively where price is most likely going to know, not, not where it's going to go, you have high probability setups. And then you add my indicator, which again, you do not have to use my indicator, but if you do have access or want access to it, the pack trade group is the is the group to go to. Link it is in the description of this live stream. But in this area right here, we know when to get into the market using leptocurtic distributions of price, using objective mathematical areas on when price is most likely going to either give bearish or bullish distribution of price. That's the that's that's it. <laughs> I don't care about the fair value gap. I don't care about what the weekly bias on the on the Dixie's doing. I don't care what how the interest rates came in. I, I don't care about nothing else. And people will be like, "Well, Austin, that's so silly. You're you're trading blind." No, I'm not, because I and I understand that I'm going to take losses, and I understand that I'm going to be incorrect. But if I operate at a 65 to 67 percent edge, or accuracy knowing a singular place on the chart where it's going to move and i know that in addition to price wanting to try to retrace to this level of uh, which is the midnight open i know that i can get at least 25 points of that retracement i don't need anything else i don't care about anything else i could still be wrong right i could take a loss i took a loss yesterday after a huge huge win streak uh la this this past friday Though they will happen. But if I try to keep adding stuff onto it, like, oh, well, there's a fair value gap here. There's an order block. There's blah, 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 blah. If I keep going down the road of all these different things to look at, I'm going to cripple my analysis. And I'm going to ruin my accuracy. Somebody said this once, and it's very true, is the more stuff you add to the chart, the more you add, the, le the more you take away. Meaning the more you, ta you take away from your accuracy. The more confluences, the more like bias, the more assets and cross-referencing assets that look and move the similar all that stuff you're you're ruining the accuracy of how much you can just get on these charts and get out and be done for the day like i don't want to sit here and be a slave to these charts just watching them for hours on end i want to take my points i want to have a move that is statistically able to to be made and i want to be done for the day What's up? Congrats on the engagement, Jonathan Brunett. Thank you so much, man. Atlanta, Georgia. Nice. The only time I have ever been in Atlanta, Georgia is to fly there. <laughs> I've never actually went through Georgia or anything like that. So now that I'm in my time frame, now that I'm in my time window... Now that I'm just waiting, this is the this is the part that kills traders. This is the part that kills any any ounce of just dopamine, and that's just waiting, just waiting for your setup to happen.
haven't had any other red folder events either this morning. We got um, we got some yellow folders at ten, eleven thirty, but my my goal is to be done way before then, anyways. Also, if you are new to the stream or you're still not in the Discord, I'm doing a week-long workshop, 7 p.m. EST, every single day, Monday through Friday this week. Um, so if you're not in there, make sure you join. It's free to attend. There's no upsells. I'm not going to say, oh, join this workshop, and then to have the hidden key unlocked, you have to pay the rest. Like <laughs> Literally, here's my Discord. Go to events, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. It's going to all culminate. Literally, this is going to go over every single ounce of everything I use on the charts. No, no hidden anything. And it all builds into the last day, which would be Friday this week, of me literally just live trading. Live trading, executing everything that I go over here. All, all the way from the psychology that I use, the strategy that I use, how I view the markets, what I'm literally doing right now pretty much in front of you guys, and I'm putting my money where my mouth is, right? Like, th this is the part that you will never hardly see with all these people doing workshops and courses and trainings and all this stuff is they'll give you the philosophy all day long, but they'll rarely show you the execution. I'm showing you the execution, just like how I'm showing you right now. So really Friday is not going to be any different than what I normally do. Uh, for those of you that watch my streams, both on YouTube and in the discord, but that's how it's going to be like for the new people that maybe have never seen me trade or don't watch me on YouTube. Uh, you'll see just me live trading, calling price as it is showing exactly the, the parts of price that I look for, how I use data, how I use statistics. Um, I think if I were to rate the importance, I mean, all of these are going to be important. You should not skip a single one of them, uh, either watch the replay or whatever. But if I were to rate the importance, honestly, the reason you suck, <laughs> this one right here, it's, it's, and I specifically made it day four because I want I want people to come go through and get the other the foundational stuff. But this right here, I'm telling you, this that's probably going to be the best one because it's going to relate to the most amount of people. It, it's going to relate to everyone that's over trading, revenge trading, hopping from 20 million different strategies, thinking there's some magical best time frame, some best way of looking at the market, some best way of doing whatever. Uh, your your bad habits and how to fix them, all that stuff. It's going to be in that one. So I think it's going to be a very, very good one. And again, it's all free. You literally come there, ask as many questions as you want during the workshops, and we're going to have a good time. And it's going to be recorded, uploaded here on YouTube in the, in the coming weeks. And the reason I'm doing it, because people can be like, well, Austin, why are you doing it? Like, there's always, if something's free... Then I'm the product. Well, to a degree, you're correct. I just literally want to add a legacy that I'm known for. There's all these content creators out there. They they let their they publish their own ways of viewing the markets, either paid or for free. And I want to do that too. I want to leave my mark behind on, you know, how I view price because I get asked a bunch. So selfishly, I'm really doing it to alleviate a lot of questions that I'm all, <laughs> always being asked. 
And that's how do you do this? How do you view price? How do you execute? Where's your stop loss? Do, do, do blah, blah, blah. How, what's your psychology? How do you stay confident and draw down? All that stuff. Um, so this is literally going to encompass most of all the questions that I'm, I'm asked and constantly given and summed up into five major videos that's going to be in a little playlist on, on YouTube. And so anytime I get get asked that question, I can just forward you to the to the videos. And it also appeals to the to the new trader because I, I literally made it all the way dumbed down to starting number one, right? The basics. Like today we're going over the basics. Today we're literally like if you are still new or even if you are an advanced trader but you don't understand how I specifically view the markets, this is for you, right? It's the basics. What is market structure? The only things you need in reading price. So how you're seeing me read price right now is exactly what I'm going to be going over, but a little bit more into detail on why this works, why the way I view prices is, is accurate for me. And it's really for me, again, for me, the only stuff that I really need. I don't need to know where the break of structure is or the break of market structure shifting order blocks, loop-de-loops, and standard deviations. I don't need to know anything else because this is what allows me to see price clearly. And it's the only stuff that I need, but it's not to get that confused with this is the best way of trading or the only way of trading. I want to make that perfectly clear because I don't care how you trade, but this is the way I do it. And this is really all you need. Even starting at a bare bones beginner, that's how I'm going to approach it. And then how price moves on any asset. Because a lot of people are like, Austin, does this work on Bitcoin? Does this work on Euro USD, GBU, whatever? Like, yes, <laughs> this this works with any asset because any asset produces results and statistics and any asset has market structure. Every asset has liquidity. Every asset that's highly traded has any, all these things. And that's all you need. The problem, the problem with the world of traders that we live in is everyone wants everything handed to them, right? Because when people ask, does this work? This is the problem that a lot of people have. When they ask, Austin, does this work with any asset? Or does this work with gold? What they're asking is, does this exact entry model, starting at 8 o'clock to 11.15, drawing these specific liquidity footprints, does all, shooting for 25 points, does this, if I just copy and paste this into gold, will it work? No, absolutely not. You have to use the foundation of what I'm showing here of how I trade and then do your own research <laughs> on what's the average price movement of gold that you can get using this model that moves in your favor. What's the, what's the time frame? What's the start and stop time that gives you the best probability of, of the day and, and at what session to give you the highest retrace probability. And then where is the best ways on gold to view the liquidity, right? Like find the liquidity footprints that are that those are questions you have to answer. But if you don't or if you're not willing to put in the work, if you're not willing to take this philosophy, then apply it to another asset, then you're going to get the craziest amount of results. You're, you're going to if you're shooting for 25 points <laughs> on some assets, you're never going to hit it. And on some assets, that may be two seconds. Like this is very specific. Like this risk management is very specific to MNQ, to NASDAQ. So that's a common question that I get asked, and the, and the way they're, they're asking it is, is exactly how I'm doing MNQ related to every other asset? Absolutely not. The risk management is specific to MNQ. But the philosophy of retracing to the midnight open and reacting off of liquidity footprints, that is, that's, you can apply that to anything. You can apply that to any asset. But you have to put in the work. You have to analyze one asset, learn how the asset moves, learn how the price moves in a specific manner. Oh, no, nah, no, nah, nope, nope. You already lost me, Austin. You already lost me. I'm going to go back and find a 100% win rate AI chat GPT created strategy. You, you already lost me. <laughs> No, Austin, I, I need to draw 20 million bajillion different. I, I need to draw the trend line 
I need to I need to have this fair value gap right here to tell me where the fair value gap is, and I need this I, I need this order block to be shown right here with I, I need I need to see everything. <laughs> if you're not willing to let go of of this of that way of thinking, then you're at then this it's not going to work. You got to go find something else, and that's fine. My way of trading isn't going to click with everyone out there. But you have to be willing to put in the work. So this is a very good strategy, and people will ask me all day long. Like uh, even even my community was a little concerned at first with giving away all this for free. But I, I say this all the time: I can give you a one hundred percent win rate strategy. I could say, "Hey guys, I, I, I don't. No one has a one hundred percent win rate strategy." I want to get that perfectly clear. But hypothetically. I could say at this point in time, every single day, you can go long and get 10 points from the market. Every single day. What's going to happen? People are going to do that, and they're going to say, okay, how can I get 20 points? How can I get 15 points? How can I supplement this? Okay, well, what happens after I get the 10 points? Can I trade another strategy? People are going to be greedy. They're going to go crazy. They're going to over-optimize it. They're going to overfit it. And they're just they're inevitably going to be right back to where they were because it's all in the mind of how you actually treat the, the the markets, and if your discipline sucks, you're never going to be you're never going to get net value from the markets. But that's why I'm I'm fine showing all this because we have what 68 we have 68 viewers right now. I even said this in my Discord for the uh, the the workshop the week long workshop that we have. I said it right here. I gave a little announcement, a reminder announcement this past Friday. I said, one thing I want to point out for expectation management, most of you will still fail. Uh, most of you still will fail that join this workshop. Why? People will not be willing to let go of their ego to see how truly simple trading can be. When I go through this workshop, people are going to still want to use all this other mumbo jumbo. If they, if they love the way I trade... If they click with everything and everything makes sense in their brain, they're still going to want to add 20 bazillion indicators to their chart. They're still going to want to have 20 billion different ways of looking at the market plastered on their chart. And then number two, this is 100% free. I'm not charging anything in this workshop at all. So it's 100% free. And naturally, most people take free things and will put little value on them since they have no skin in the game or didn't work for it. That's why... Like if if I just gave you ten dollars, you're gonna now think of how can I spend this ten dollars because it's free. I got it. I'm not gonna save it. I'm not gonna invest it. I'm gonna spend it, and that's just the natural human instinct. It's not a bad thing. Like you're, it's not like you're just you're evil for wanting to spend bonus money. But you have to objectively acknowledge that that's true. You have to understand that you're not going to appreciate something if it's given to you versus something that you worked for. You just have to understand that. So while I'm giving a ton of value for free, 90% of the people that are going to attend this workshop are still not going to improve their life. They're going to join. They're going to listen to everything. They're going to get motivated. They're going to get hyped. They're going to back test. They're going to do all this stuff. And then in a week, they're going to go back to their terrible habits because they took a loss or because they can't be in drawdown or because they can't let a trade play out because they're scared, because they're over-risking. I mean, the the list goes on and on and on and on. So just like, yeah, Anya, most traders don't want to put in the work. They just want to copy trade. Exactly. That's why I say what I say, and I'm real with you guys, because it doesn't get views, right? There's There's people trading right now live on YouTube getting thousands of views. And that doesn't get views. It doesn't get clicks. It doesn't sound sexy, but I'm fine. I'm fine being real with you guys and, <laughs> you know, growing my brand the right way versus, versus the easy way. About to enter the uh, the dead space of, of price, 
I like to call nine nine o'clock to around nine seventeen a.m. EST every single morning. I've noticed around that that range, you just have dead space. Now it's not every day; we could still get some volatility, but most days, nine a.m. to nine seventeen, just dead zone, dead zone for price because price is just like the everyone is just waiting for market open, and usually some when you have news days like at eight thirty, you'll have liquidity being created, you know, all this stuff being created, price will move impulsively, volume just goes like a just crazy rushing in, and then it dies, <laughs> and then price is waiting for market open. So that's that's why I like to call 9 to around 9.17, just the dead space, and then we start getting more volatility. farther we extend above this midnight open, the farther we come and just attack these little liquidity footprints, the more juicy like the, these trades become, I'm telling you. Like even just the single entry rejections. So like if you were taking like the rejection off of one of these footprints, you're going to have like a lower win rate. So this is, this is something cool with this model is if you don't have access to my indicator, right? You don't want to do that. That's totally fine. And you take these rejections like this right here. You're going to have like a lower win rate, about a 50-ish percent, maybe 55 to 60. Sometimes you get a little bit on a nice little win streak. Uh, so like a single entry, meaning you take, instead of building into your position, instead of dollar cost averaging into your position, like what I do, you unload your, your risk in a single trade, right? So like a lot of people, they'll risk, I don't know, 100 bucks or 200 bucks in a, on, on futures or 1% in a trade on CFDs or half a percent per trade on CFDs. That's usually what people do, right? So if you were doing a single entry model or a single entry style of this, you can get some pretty crazy risk to rewards uh, for shooting for that midnight open. And I've seen this play out. So like, yeah, you're going to, you're going to take some losses. Like you can even see right here, this would have been a losing trade, but when these rejections happen and they, st and then, you know, price follows through with the statistic, I mean, you can get five, four, three, six risk to rewards that greatly make up for uh, for all the little small losses. And the losses are pretty small because you're keeping it, you know, where stop loss is right above that protected high or vice versa if you're taking longs is below that protected low. The reason why I really like the dollar cost average approach and I really love building into the position is simply that it allows me to be wrong and still make money. That's that's the craziest part about all this is I'm using statistics to tell me where price is going to go and then I'm only getting a small piece of that. I'm only like in, instead of waiting for price to get all the way down here, I'm just capturing a small chunk of that movement which is 25 points because I know statistically if price does start to go into my favor with these 25 is stupid common. 50 is the average, is the median. So if I take below the median or below the average of that, 25, the one standard deviation below the average, that's even more common. You know, so you got, for those of you that aren't math nerds like me, right, that's your median. One standard deviation above, one, one standard deviation below. The one standard deviation below is the most common, right? This is your average, and then this is your less common. So we don't want to shoot for the less common, obviously. So we don't we don't want to shoot for the less common. 
And we definitely don't want to shoot for the average because the average is just the average. So we, we put those away, we throw those in the trash, and we're left with the one standard deviation that is even more common, that commonly happens, you know, even more so than the average. So that's where I get the 25 points from. Then you add on top of that where I split my daily risk in a series of trades. You can see right here, these are my series of trades. I'll go in all the way to eight positions. I'll dollar cost average eight times. And as I'm doing that, I'm dynamically increasing my contracts, but I'm still keeping my daily risk. I'm not martingaling or gambling or whatever you want to call it, where I'm just doubling down, doubling down, doubling down, or anything like that. This is all encompassed in my daily risk. Meaning if I have like, if, if this line here represents my complete daily risk, all I'm doing is I'm cutting this into little slices of contracts that I'm slowly unloading into the market. So if I get if I get a base hit, like if I if I go in one DCA or two DCAs or three DCAs deep and then I get a full take profit of 25 points, th those are nice base hits and those base hits add up. But sometimes I'll go into drawdown, I'll, I'll actually be able to pick up five, six, seven DCAs. And then price only has to move a little bit, only has to correct a little bit, 25 points worth in this structure. And then now I get a nice little home run. So the home runs happen, you know, I'd say about 40% of the time. And the base hits happen the majority of the time. And those base hits turn into home runs the more that I stack up. But still keeping my daily risk. So the daily risk gets tighter and tighter, or the stop loss, if that's what you want to call it. The stop loss is getting tighter and tighter, but so is how far price has to move. So all we're doing is we're playing statistics with math, and you have a very good statistically driven strategy. We're coming back up here in this liquidity footprint. Let's see if we break above it. If we do break above this footprint... We could create structure all the way up to here. But if we reject here, this will be this will be the moment where I would really like to start building into my positions to that 25 points to uh, to midnight open. If we go to the higher time frame, you can even see it really, really nicely on, on the hourly here. If we do break this level. I mean, it would only make sense for us to come and attack up here. There's nothing to the left that is going to keep price objectively, unless we create structure inside of here that's very that, that's very strong. Objectively, right now, all we have is this structure up here, this footprint up here. And if we come up here and make that footprint and react off that footprint, then that's where most likely it's going to be our catalyst for then correcting, creating structure. And look at what we're doing. On a higher time frame, we're just creating structure. Right, price never moves in a single line. Like this, this downtrend right here is now creating structure to the upside. It's it's trying to either say, okay, do we want to make a lower high, or do we want to break this high and make a higher high? So right now we're at that decision point, and it looks like we're about fifty percent of the move, which is roughly where we make that decision. Do we want to now make structure to the downside? Okay, do we now want to make structure to the downside where this midnight open is just right in the path? And what do I tell you guys at the beginning? I'm looking to just get a piece of the pie. I'm not looking to get the whole pie. So this midnight retracement is now in line with just high time frame structure. And I'm going to now see, okay, do I want to get a piece of this? Or are we going to come all the way up here, then potentially make structure? Because any of this, any of these areas would be perfect catalysts for us to create structure to the downside or to create structure to the upside if we break this high. So that's the beauty of price. That's the beauty of literally just using statistics and market structure and just following through and executing, right? We're not sitting here being weatherman, weatherman anchors. <laughs> you, and what I mean by that is you guys know when you, when you turn on the news channel, right? We got a 60% chance of rain today and we got clouds over here and, and 50 to 60% of the time, the weatherman's wrong, right? You're, you wear, you get a, you get a rain jacket, you get your umbrella, you go to work. It doesn't even rain. It's sunny. It's, it's 
not even cloudy out, and you're like, dude, I brought an umbrella and wore a rain jacket for nothing today. And then they say, oh, clear skies today, 20% chance of particip- or, or p- precipitation, and then you go, and then it starts raining. You're like, dude, is this guy ever right? Like, I'm not sitting here trying to be a weatherman. I don't care where price goes. I'm okay being wrong. I'm not going to sit here and say, well, guys, uh, if you take a look at the Dixie on the weekly, we have a Dixie, and, we, and it's and it looks like it's di- a divergence to the uh, the U.S. Oh, the VIX. Oh, no, the VIX is up, too, and we have a... Dude, I don't need to sit here and be a weatherman trying to predict how, what the weekly and the monthly is going to do. I don't care. And I don't need a bias to say, okay, well, if we look on the hourly here, um, well, the bias is blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter because guess what? The long-term bias, if you really want to argue, it's bullish. <laughs> like, the only real bias that, that that is true is bullish. Because what what's the bias? is or When you say bias, are you meaning the day? For the day on the off the daily candle, are you meaning the hourly bias? Are you meaning the four hour, the 30 minute, the 15 minute? Because in structure, there's hundreds of biases on different time frames. Like for, for price to even on the on the if we go to the 15 minute, even on this 15 minute time frame here from from here to here, there were little biases in all of these candles on the lower time frames. There was a bearish bias here on the on the 30 second chart. While there was a bullish bias on the five minute. And then over here when we had this pullback, there was a bearish bias on the minute. But then, a, you know what I mean? Like, that's why, like, all these different talks of where this is and where we're going to see this. And it, it's just wasted mental capital. I don't care where price is going to go a week from now or where the Dixie's going to be or where the VIX is going to be or what the macroeconomic climate's going to look like on the interest rates. And I, I don't care about none of that. Because I'm a day trader, and the average time that I spend on the charts in a trade is 48 minutes. That's it. So why do I need to know anything else? Why do I need to know any of that? And I even made a tweet about that the other day. Um, I, I don't I don't need to know about anything else. <laughs> so sometimes when I post like my trade setups and stuff and my trade ideas, and people are like, I don't know, dude. I, I wouldn't go long there. We have a this and this and this and this and that. I don't care. I'm okay being wrong. You could be right. That's the beauty of trading. You could be absolutely right. And I'm still going to make money. (laughs) Because I'm going to be wrong about this trade. And then I'm going to be right about the next trade. And I'm going to be right about the next trade. And then I'm going to be wrong about another trade. And then I use positive risk management along all these trades. I'm going to make money and you're going to make money. You're going to be wrong about a trade and I'm going to be right. And then vice versa and then vice versa. And then sometimes we're both going to be right. Sometimes we're both going to be wrong. It doesn't matter. And I think that's what hangs up a lot of people is they're constantly looking for reasons to not get into a trade because they're afraid of being wrong. Like, I don't know. I don't want to take that short because there's a blah, blah, blah. Just take that short, bro. If you have a few data points and it's backed by statistics to to take that trade, take that freaking trade. What's the worst that's going to happen? You're using a stop loss, and if you're not, then you you should not even be trading in the first place. But you're using a stop loss. You have a you have an area on the chart that invalidates your idea. So why not trust that area, and trust that that the risk management that you're using is going to keep you profitable? Because mathematically speaking, you can have a thirty percent win rate and still be profitable with the right risk to reward structure. So take the freaking trade. <laughs> Erbos underscore X. Morning, Austin. Good morning. Thank you for tuning into the live stream. You look new. Welcome. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. We're slowly growing. We're slowly growing. We're at 2.17 thousand subscribers. It's slowly growing. I love to see it. Love to see it. I love the community we're building. I love everything that I'm doing for you guys. Like, dude, it's just, we're having such a good time. Uh, in 2024 so far. And it's only April, bro. It's only April. We got two more quarters left. No, three. I can't even can't even count. We got three more quarters of trading left this year. We're freaking killing it.
watching your live stream a few times. Nice. Appreciate you tuning in, man. I appreciate all you guys giving me your time. That's why I like go into super, super in-depth detail when I talk. Because I understand a lot, some people that join this, they're not a part of my pack trade group discord. They're just, they're just here to see what I'm about. And I always want to make sure you guys understand 100% what I'm doing. I, like, this is literally just a documentation for me. Like, I'm not sitting here to give you guys signals. I'm not sitting here doing any... Like, I literally just am doing this because I think it would be the coolest thing ever to go back in time. Yo, we just broke 70 viewers. Let's go! <laughs> Yo, drop a like. So go, in, go to my Twitter and share the stream because we're here spreading around real trading. But I love to do this because I think it would be so cool just years down the road when I'm where I want to be five years from now, ten years from now, because I'm never going to be 100% happy where I'm going to be, but I'm, I have goals. And when I'm at those levels and those milestones, I want to look back and be like, dude, I shared real value and I shared like a, I built a legacy for myself that I can look back and be proud of. I'm not sitting here buying Lambos and freaking Ferraris and renting all this junk and getting Gucci whatever and these stupid watches like who cares about that no one that's not that's gonna do nothing <laughs> that's gonna do nothing for me right now I'm 26 years old I have no business I have no business at 26 years old with a Lamborghini the only business I have at 26 years old is to work my absolute butt off that's it that's the that's the only job that I have at 26 years old. And then once I get older and once I build more experience into the charts, once I build more, get more wisdom, I get humbled more. I learn more. I fail more. I'm sharing that journey here on YouTube with everyone to see completely transparent. And then I get to look back on myself and be proud of myself. That's why everything that you guys see that I do on these charts, everything that I say, I want you guys to get a return of your time just like how if you get into a trade, you want to return on your investment. You want to return on your trade. I want you guys to have a return on your time when you come here. And not just, all right, guys, I'm taking, I'm, I'm looking for longs. I don't want to do that. Who's that handsome guy, Austin guy? <laughs> Bowie. I just got engaged, dude. I'm sorry. I'm off the market. I'm off the market. You guys had your chance. You had your chance. You didn't make a move. <laughs> DVP said exactly. Unfortunately, I think he's taken now, Bowie. <laughs> Now in the dead space. We're in the dead space. That's why I told you guys. Nine o'clock. Right here. Now in the dead space. Nine to nine seventeen. It's just dead. Price loves to just range. It's waiting for, for the market to, to wake up. Girlfriend hates my Austin posters above my head. <laughs> you haven't adjusted your recent bearish footprint. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. I don't touch them. I don't touch them. We do have a new one that was created off the eight o'clock candle. I could draw that one if you guys want to visually see it. But these footprints, I don't. I don't touch them uh, post eight o'clock. Because these are levels that come back and become tested every single day. Every single day, I'm telling you, these these footprints, once they once they get like re, once they're respected, they're respected again at a later date. But once they're melted through, like I could delete this one here, but I'll never like 
readjust it if 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 that makes sense. But if there's new ones being created, yeah, I could I can draw it for you if you guys want to see it. But these just give me context of where price is going to go. Cuz I'm still waiting for my bearish distribution to print to get me into the trade altogether. Uh, it's really the Austin body pillow she dislikes. <laughs> you got a you got a picture of me on a body pillow? I think I'd make a pretty handsome body pillow, not gonna lie. <laughs> Maybe that should be my first merch idea. Instead of t shirts and sweatshirts and all that stuff, it's body pillows. AC trades body pillows. Your win rate increases the moment you buy one. Not guaranteed. Backed by nothing. Pure hopium. Uh, we're going to break 100 viewers. We're going to break 100 viewers here soon. I, I can feel it. It's coming. It may not come today. But in the in the preceding weeks, I can. we're slow getting there we're slowly getting there like a few weeks ago we were hovering around 50 to 60 regularly now we're breaking the 70s regularly we got to break the 80s we got to break the 90s and then when we're there we're gonna break out <laughs> just like the markets we're gonna break out of this range here soon right now 72 is the resistance 72 live viewers that's the resistance and we need to break out of that and then we're there <laughs> She will never take that one away. <laughs> Who here would buy a, an a, an AC Trades body pillow if I if I sold them? <laughs> Let me know in the chat. Who <laughs> do I need to do a poll? <laughs> the answers will be: Who will buy a AC Trades body pillow? Yes, double yes. Break out to the downside. All right, I got to block Bowie now. I got to block Bowie from the stream. You got to drink the Kool-Aid, Bowie. Only if we had your pick on it. <laughs> Instead of my logo, it has to be my face. Okay. Deal. That's what it has to take. See, I don't sell courses. I sell body pillows. <laughs> you can't you can leak a course but you can't leak a body pillow in a mankini dude done done how about that uh, can't can't help you with the pillow <laughs> Wesley, dude, you are missing an entire market. Dude, you know how much money you would make in the merch business if you if you created customizable body pillows? Got to find a supplier, dude, I'm telling you. That's the market to be in. Not financial advice. <laughs> Can we get a dirty dog pillow? <laughs> Dude, what is going on? <laughs> what are we actually talking about here? How do we even start this? This is all started with Bowie. Bowie's the, the common denominator here in the chaos that creates on these streams. Right, third, we have Goldman Sachs. 10 o'clock, we got the housing market index, business inventories, and then 1130, we have some yellow folders of a U.S. six-month bill high, bid to cover, three-month bill to bid to cover. 
and that's about it. So we should have some uh, nice little market open volume coming in at 9.30. I mean, you know, with all the drama that happened over the weekend, listen, I'm not an expert on war, nor am I qualified to talk about it by any means. But could see some nice volatility e either way from all the news. It could be already priced in. Who knows? I'm not a market maker. Nancy Pelosi is not my aunt or my cousin or my related related to me in any way, shape, or form. So I can't tell you what the market's going to do. I can just draw my footprints and mind my own business. Stay in my lane. That's it. Staying in my lane, making my own money. Pocket. <laughs> Pocket has all the power. Guys, what'd y'all do this weekend? I freaking had an amazing weekend. Got a full body, deep tissue, and Swedish massage, like everything. Got Did the whole hot stone thing too. Terrified the freaking crap out of me at first because I've never had hot stones on my back before, so I didn't know how that would be. Um, went canoeing or kayaking. Very big difference there. Really good time. Really good time. Placed the liner in my swimming pool. <laughs> I also went swimming, but I did not replace a liner in a swimming pool. Dude, they have one of these outdoor hot tubs. Oh my god, dude, let me tell you. I love going into hot tubs when it's cold outside. I don't know what it is, like just the temperature difference. I, I love the feeling of it. But I love it when it's like a nice 50, 40 degrees outside, but then there's a hot tub. Oh my god, dude, it feels so good. So we went hot tubbing for a bit. Took the lady out to a nice restaurant, because if you guys don't know, you're, if you haven't seen yet, I got engaged last week, so did a little celebration getaway this weekend. Danny built a goat house. Bro, Danny, Danny builds houses. <laughs> That thing looked like you could store. You looked like you could turn that into a one-bedroom apartment. All for a goat. I want to be a goat now. This is the goat trading trading room now. The the goat trade group. GTG. Oh, what's Danny? I see Danny deleted a message. Uh oh. What's Danny saying? I didn't see it. <laughs> you want to be Danny's guest? Whoa. I didn't say that now. <laughs> Whoa, now. I'd love to get a potential uh, entry right here. I love this. I love this reaction off of this footprint. Waiting for my confirmation. This is the boring, unsexy part of trading that you have to find sexy. You have to find sexiness in the unsexy. If you find sexiness in the unsexy, you get the sexy results, and then you can get the sexy car, and you get the sexy money, and you get sexy blah, 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 blah. But you got to find sexy in the unsexy. That's the issue. That's the difference between the 10% and the 90%. The 90% is getting dopamine hits, wanting to click this button 20 bazillion times, watching every strategy video not to man on YouTube, 20 bazillion indicators on their chart, 20 bazillion lines, 20 bazillion, because it feels good. It feels good to draw and show a bunch of stuff and to articulate and talk about a bunch of stuff, but the execution's very small. Versus the 10%, the 10%, 
they're talking very little and executing a, a ton. <laughs> they're drawing very little and execu executing when the time matters. The goat of goat buildings. <laughs> you just want to... Oh my god, Wes. <laughs> Get the frick out of here. Dirty dog trade group branch. <laughs> the dirty dogs. <laughs> we could have a we could have a branch of traders called the dirty dogs. The it's the branch of the trade the pack trade group. The dirty dogs are the uh the 50k payout club. Once you get to 50k 50k of payouts accrued, you're now a part of the dirty dog club. You're officially a dirty dog. The dirty goat. <laughs> the dirty goat's 100K. <laughs> Those are the ranks. Dirty dogs and dirty goats. Have exactly two minutes. Two minutes to mark it open. I want a t-shirt when I'm a part of that. Dude, I want a t-shirt. Shoot. I want a t-shirt. I'm a dirty dog trader. <laughs> I'm a dirty goat trader. <laughs> Imagine somebody that has no idea about trading sees that. I'm a dirty goat trader. What? You trade dirty goats for a living? <laughs> what, the, what does this mean? Not clean ones? You don't like clean goats? Why, do you, why are you trading dirty goats? And how are they getting this dirty? So many questions. And, and why are you doing this? <laughs> There's so many ways to make money. Why are you doing this? Like 930. 30 seconds. <laughs> 30 seconds. Dude, I love this song. Let's see. I do not take trades off the 930 candle open either. So this is another invalid entry if uh, it does present here. <laughs> so the only two bearish distributions <laughs> are the two candles that I do not take trades off of. News candles and market open candles. <laughs>
if we get this entry here. <laughs> I timed out Bowie as a joke. Get this entry here. <laughs> it says it deleted the message. I didn't know it deleted when you timed out. That's the first time I've ever timed someone out. <laughs> I only did it for a minute, though. Hey, see if we get a new tree. Literally, like I said, guys, the only, the only two. Trade conditions I never take trades off of. 9.30 open. News candle. <laughs> Literally the, and then the two that only ever presented themselves so far. Market open. News candle. But sometimes you'll have that. We'll see. Let's see if we create an entry here on the way to, mar to uh, midnight open. Because now we're heading pretty aggressively off this footprint. Like I said, guys... If you guys were watching this in the morning when I first went live, this is what I this is what I was saying was I was really loving to see is I was wanting to see price come up into this area, uh, dig deeper into these footprints, then give me that entry. That way I can then take that to midnight open with 25 points. But I need to get that entry. I'm not going to FOMO. I'm not going to take it because I'm just going to see it, right? I'm taking a high-quality entry with backed by data. I'm not going to sit in FOMO and just rush into it. That is the difference between just being profitable and just trading your plan and, and being an emotional trader. Fitness and trading $50 base hit with Nancy 1.0. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. If you took that, if you took a single entry, so if you took that rejection off of that liquidity footprint just now, so you would have had to have taken that 9.30 open. I don't like trading off the 9.30. I'm just going to be real. I I don't like to, to trade that. But if you took that trade, then yeah, you got your 25 points. You're done for the day right there. Or if you took this trade back here, if you took this rejection, I could see how you, you could have gotten 25 points right there. 8.37. Okay, so you took you took that. Okay, I see what you're talking about. You took that rejection right there. I see it. Oh, we think you're gonna get the night open and not get this entry. <laughs> Sometimes this happens, though, guys. I tell I tell you guys this all the time. You watch my streams. This happens very rarely, but I will not take trades just because I'm streaming. Sometimes there's going to be just no trade days, and this may be one of them. If we come all the way down here and hit this midnight open without an entry, then I'm just not taking a trade that day. Some people will be like, oh, but Austin, you can trade. Every you can. There's, there's models out there, and you can trade every single day. But I don't like trading that way. I, it just doesn't click with my brain. It doesn't make me f have peace on the charts. And that's what everyone should be chasing for on the, on these markets is literally just having peace on the charts. Now, if price wants to create structure to the midnight open, meaning we, cause price never moves in a straight line, right? So in this momentum that we're seeing now, I would love to see price create structure. So come back up here about 50%, create bearish distribution. Once again, I enter off the bearish distribution and then we just create structure down a minute open. That's what I would love to see happen now instead of just this straight melt. So I kind of want to see a correction and then a continuation of the bearish structure that we're trying to uh, form here. But yeah, watch this hit midnight open without a wolf. It could. It, it very well could.
Back to back testing now. Yep. Yes, sir. I'm telling you guys, if you have trouble staring at these charts and wanting to trade more, over trade, like even with what Fitness and Trading LLC just said, I mean, it's it's an amazing thing that no one wants to talk about or do. Like if you are FOMOing, like if you took a trade that followed a model, but then you just want to keep on trading, bro, go back test, <laughs> read price, understand price, be, be more intimate with the asset that you're trading. Like you don't have to sit here and, and always hop around finding ways to make your strategy better. Just stick to the strategy and then go back and back test and, and just learn how price moves. Ex practice your trading model. And then once you've practiced it 100, 200, 300 times and you've, you've back tested it so much that you don't even have data to go back and in, in replay mode on, <laughs> learn, learn price. See, like, okay, NASDAQ moves this many points this way and in this session and does this and has this type of way. Like find the averages of where price moves. Find how price moves. Does it move more trendy? Does it move in just a single moment, like with natural gas, right? Natural gas and oil, they make a move. They make like one impulsive move around six to eight o'clock every single morning. Go watch my natural gas video if you guys don't believe me. Around the same time, every single day, it gets manipulated in one singular direction and breaks out of a channel. Now, does that happen every day? No. But most of the time, there is a channel that cre that is created that price builds up accumulation in, and then it breaks out of that channel. And then it just moves very aggressively, and you can capture a decent little trade every single morning almost with natural gas. But that's a specific pattern that natural gas does. ES moves a little bit slower, but does it a little bit in a more trendy fashion. Like every single asset moves a little unique to that asset. Learn how that asset moves and then just be stupid consistent at reading that asset. But you won't do that unless you backtest. You won't get that experience unless you backtest and forward test and live trade. And that's this consistency right here, focusing on what matters, psychology, discipline, and consistency, backtesting when you don't want to, St coming up to the trade and, and taking trades even when you don't want to because maybe you take a loss last time or whatever the case may be, showing up every single day, red, green, or flat. So this was that structure that I was talking about where we have a nice little pullback to about 50%. Or we can come all the way back up to liquidity. I don't care. I'm just saying most of the time, if structure wants to be created, it's at that 50% mark. And then once that happens, then, you know, you either get a continuation or it just completely shifts altogether. But either way, I'd like to see the continuation somewhere around here. So that way I can then get into the trade. If I do get bearish distribution, shoot for my 25 points, two midnight open, done. So as you see there, you can see it alerts me when it prints. But I'm looking for bearish, not bullish.
guys. 55 likes and 60 live viewers. Hey, I can't ask for a better ratio than that. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for all the likes. I really do appreciate it. Thank you. I'm not even going to say hit the like button because most of you guys already did. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Bullish liquidity, right? Bullish momentum, right here. Uh, Austin, what is the difference between MNQ1 and MNQ M4? Well, M4 is the specific contract uh, for MNQ, so M4 is the specific June contract of of the futures contract because in futures they go by contracts, right? And when a contract expires, a new one is formed for that next series of of uh, trading, right? So MNQ M4 is specifically the 2024 June contract. That's what the 4 represents is the 2024 MNQ contract. But MNQ1 you see right here, MNQ1 is just, it's all of the contracts lumped together. So it just, it's a, it's a continuous contract. So this is just allowing you to see the continuous flow of price without being interrupted by each contract. That's all it is. It's the same asset. It's just different contracts to represent where you're trading. So the only time that really matters is if you're actually trading it, you want to be on the right contract on your broker but for viewing price, like what we're doing, because uh, I got my trade of eight pulled up on another tab, uh, for just analyzing price, it doesn't matter. You can either be on MNQ M4 or just MNQ1. That's all of them. Uh, so trading MNQ1 all the way time through every quarter is fine. Well, I mean, you want to have on your broker, you want to have the specific contract. You don't want to be trading an old contract or whatever. So, like on Trade Evade, I'm I'm on MNQ M4, but on Trading View, just to view the chart, I'm on MNQ1 because it doesn't matter. Yeah, for sure, man. All right, guys, let's see. This is that structure. Yep, sure, man. I wanted to see price create. Now let's see if we have that icing on the cake, that bearish distribution. I think if we melt here and we get one more candle, I should get that distribution. This is literally where I wanted to see that structure continue too. So let's see. <laughs> but do you guys see why structure and liquidity and data, this is all you truly need? Like, let me know in the chat. Do you guys see this? Is anybody confused by this? Like, this is why, like, I'm not sitting here being a fortune teller. Like, there, I don't have a magic eight ball. I, I can't go back in time and forward in time and see where price is going to go. The reason I'm able to articulate where price is most likely going to go with high probability 
is because we have liquidity. We have structure. And if we understand that price will only ever move in this structure, right? And then we combine that with a data point and we combine that with liquidity on where liquidity is going to start that structure to bring us to that data point. That's all you really need. When you have the catalyst, when you know that price is going to get into a certain area to be the catalyst to deliver price to a data point, and you have a data point to know how many times out of a series of times that price tried to do that, and you know that you have a statistical edge of getting to this level, and then you understand structure to understand how structure is going to be created, how price is going to be delivered from here to here, that's all you need. You have the end destination, okay? So if you were on a road trip, you have the end destination in, in mind. You have the start point, okay, where you're leaving the house from. And then you have the, the directions. You have the, the GPS, turn here, make this exit here, stay left, stay right, stay on this lane, stay blah, blah, blah. You have the directions. What more do you need? Right? Like... If you were on a road trip and I, you have both the start and end point and the directions on how to get to that end point, are you sitting here making it more complicated for yourself when you go on a road trip? Are you, are you making sure that you know the weather in California and the weather in Ontario, Canada, and, and when the stars are going to align and create another solar eclipse? Like, Do you need to know anything else or do you only need to know the directions, the start and end point? That's it, right? You, you wouldn't need and waste any time or energy focusing on anything else of the road trip. So that's all we're doing on these charts. We're making it as simple as possible using an area of time of where the end point is most likely going to be 65 to 67% of the time. And we understand how the price is going to be delivered to that end point, And we understand where the catalyst is going to be created to start the production of that end point. What else do you need to get to that end area? Yes, first entry. See, do we get an entry on MES? Oh, you're on the three minute on MES, right? Be on the one minute. One minute, you got a couple entries already. Depends on how you attack it. Oh, two minutes. Okay, guys, I'm not trading MES. Some of my people, uh, if you're new here, I don't care about none of that. Uh, some, of my, some of my members, they trade other assets. So Riley, he's trading MES on the two-minute chart. So there was your first entry. I think you're shooting for, is it five points on MES? Brother, what's your, how many points are you shooting for? I keep forgetting because y'all are doing a bunch of different things. I can't remember everything. 10. Okay, you're shooting for 10. You're shooting for that. This is my algo that you guys see printing this trade right now. So I can turn this off just to keep it less confusing. But I'm just I'm building an algo that does this automatically for me, like an al algorithm, because it's very mechanical with how I trade. So you can see there's your first entry on MES. Well, no, there's another one here. Did you not get this one, Riley? There was two. Looks like you had an entry here, but that was a news candle, so you may not be taking the news candle trades, which I understand. So if that was a news candle, okay, yeah, yeah, you, it was a news candle. See, I already know what he's gonna say. When you're, when your Discord members, when your community members <laughs> are thinking just like you, that's how you know you're doing something right. <laughs> 
You, you're doing and seeing and practicing exactly what I'm doing and seeing and practicing. There you go. And the more price is extended in this movement, the happier I am because this gives price even more room to create that bearish distribution that I need. Because keep in mind, I need that confirmation to get into this trade. So I need price to come up, create this structure, correct in this correction, right, to give me the entry. Because the closer we get to midnight open, Without this, the, my bearish distribution, then it, then I'm not getting into the trade. So the more that we're coming up here into this level here, I'll move this, move this over a bit. The the happier I am because I want to see this correction happen with giving me that distribution. And then it's also a Monday, which we have on Mondays 0.86 percent on average in the morning. Again, this is just using statistics, using data to show me the average distribution, so 0.86. So this is on average right here, 0.86%. This is on average in the AM session of, of NASDAQ for Monday specifically. This is how much we like to move. So if you take the, the high and the low right now, so the lowest point of price, we've only moved... 0.49.5%. So we still have 0.36%, so 0.36% left of price movement, of, of distribution, which again would be beautiful if it is delivered down here. So if this is the high point of the AM session, if, if data wants to play out the way it's designed, like the way that the probabilities align, again, we, we're not predicting price. We're not predicting where the market's going to move. But if data wants to play out with the, with the statistics and this is the high and the rest of the, of the morning we bleed down here to create the statistic of the 0.86% distribution, in combination with that, it's on the way to move to this midnight open in combination with the bearish distribution if, if I get it. So you guys are about to see if this happens, this is just the statistics playing out. I'm not a fortune teller. I don't have... I don't have some magic eight ball telling me where price is going to go. This is just using data and we're playing in line with the data as close as possible. And you can see if this is in fact the high of the morning and the low is now going to start to be created or set in, it's right in line with that midnight open retracement. It's right in line with filling out this 0.86%. This
Yeah, it's just teasing. <laughs> it's teasing. If we get a couple consistent candles here, we could see that distribution. Just need to get some follow through here. Here we go. Now let's see if we follow through on that. Let's see. Do we continue that structure, little structure we're forming upwards? Or do now we follow through off that cell pressure, creating bearish distribution? 25 point entry. Get my order ready just in case. It looks like, dude, we're so close. <laughs> so close. Price is really teasing today. It's really testing patience. This is good. This is why I say all the time, the, the markets give you lessons every single day, but it's up to you to take those or if you're just going to ignore them, always focusing on, can I trade? Can I trade? Can I trade? See right there? See, it's, 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 te it's tipping. If we break this structure, we could get that bearish distribution, but we need to break this structure. We can't, we can't just wick out of it. We gotta close below this. <laughs> you guys see that right there? Bear, it's it, it's teasing. <laughs> Everyone's like, "Come on, come on." <laughs> it's all right though. The patience is what will save me from a bad trade. Six seconds left. Let's see. Is this what we need? We go order filled it just closed last minute no way oh. <laughs> i gotta cancel these orders man that was like a last minute close now i gotta cancel these orders i gotta see there we go I closed them in like $2 profit. So let me see. This will be my confirmation here. I'm not going to take bad trades, but I did get $2.50 on those trades. <laughs> wow, what a what a tease. All right, 18 seconds. If this closes with bearish distribution here, I'm going to take this trade for 25 points. Five... Four, three, two, order filled. I'm in. Shooting for 25 points right there. Right in line with midnight open, right in line with the distribution. Order 
fulfilled. <laughs> 25 points and we're done, baby. 25 points. TP, let's go. Let me see the profits in the chat, baby. 25 points. You're done. We're done. What more do you need? What more do you need? Money, money. <laughs> Go. You see in the chat who all hit profit. Let's see. Let's see. Full TP Riley. Wes, worth the wait. Let's go. We have now broken the record for the, the quickest trade in, in pack trade group history. That was an 11 second or 28 second TP. <laughs> 28 second TP. Now I want you guys to pay attention to this. Okay, do not just take profit, go off, you're done for the day, you never have to do anything else again. This is when learning really kicks in. If you take a loss and or take a win, let the chart still teach you something. Do not sit here and be like, yeah, caught my win, done, done. Also, real quick, if you want to help me out, reply to this tweet with your win. Go to my Twitter. Say, hey, caught this too, love the stream. What, give me some feedback in this in, on this tweet. Just dropped this literally like 10 seconds ago. But look at where price is going. Okay, look at how we use data, market structure, and liquidity to show us exactly what we needed to do. This was a perfect statistic play. We moved. Let's, let's start with step number one. Step number one is we know... If we go to the hourly chart here, you can get 10 plus years of data. If you use this little replay mode function and use my, my midnight snap indicator, you get 10 plus years of data at your fingertips. And you can, you with a very good statistical edge, 65 to 67% of the time, you're going to retrace to this midnight open. So once my indicator loads, it takes a little bit because it's analyzing a lot of data, but we have 65 to 67% chance of moving to midnight open. That's that's step number one. So step number one, we're bearish, right? I'm looking for shorts. Step number two, we have foot, footprints right here telling us objective sell pressure. That's going to be most likely the catalyst 
for creating structure, creating price, to then start giving it motivation to come down here and play this data. That's step number two. Step number three, I know that in any of these reactions, any of these trades using my entry aid indicator because I journal and because I document my trades religiously, I know that I can get 25 points. I know that the average is 50, and I know that the standard deviation below the average is the even more common, which is 25. So I want to shoot for 25, not 50. So that's step number three on finding where my target is, where I'm going to collect profit from the statistical movement of price. Step number four, adding another confluence, adding another little piece of data. I know because I have grinded and studied the crap out of m and I know that the morning AM session on average, on average, right now, currently, as it stands, it moves 0.86%. That's what this 0.86% price delivery is. Every single AM from eight o'clock to noon, it loves to distribute on average. This is not saying it's going to for sure do this every single morning on Monday. But on average, Monday, statistically speaking, we love to move at least 0.86%. There is your distribution. The distribution happened with the high of the morning being right there at 8 o'clock. And we, we came all the way down into a T. Look at where we where we reacted from. We came down with the motivation of retracing the midnight open. We came down with the motivation of moving 25 points minimum. We came down with the motivation of creating this statistic of 0.86% movement. And you have a perfect data-driven model. What more do you need? Do you need some fancy fair value gap? Do you need some fancy harmonic pattern? Do you need some fancy 12 million bazillion biases? Do you need to look at the Dixie, the VIX, the, the ES, the order flow on the macro time frame with the mac with the fundamental analysis of the interest rates do you need to know any of that absolutely not you don't need it does it help do, can you make money doing that absolutely but you don't need it that's my main basis that's why i understand structure and data and liquidity and put it all together into a strategy i don't need anything else I don't care if we're bullish on the weekly, the monthly, the quarterly, the 144 minute time frame. I don't care. I truly, truly, truly don't care. And I do not say that out of arrogance. I don't say that being cocky. I don't say that saying that my model is the most pristine model out here and you need to trade how I trade. I say that because that's truly all you need because that's how I do things. That's, that's how I practice. And if I practice how I preach because I stream in front of you every single day, then what, like, what, else, what else is there? Right? Like, I'm not going to tell you, well, I use this, but maybe it would also help if you did this. It, doesn't, it, it does nothing for you. So Luis Marias says, great trade, bro. Are you finished now? Absolutely, I'm finished. Because this is the most important part and the important lesson of everything I said today. But most people are going to tune out. I'm going to give you an expectation management right now. Most people are going to tune out to this. We've already dropped like 10 viewers. <laughs> the statistic is always going to be true. Most people don't want to now start putting their learning caps on because they're too high on life they're too high on the win they're like all right i'm done turn off the computer nothing else to learn today but the people that stick around right now in this stream you guys really really want this you want to turn this into a business you want the you want to not just be able to learn how to trade you want to literally get this and crush it and be able to read price with so much confidence that if anybody comes to you, I don't care how many years of experience they have, if they're like, Louise, I don't know if you take that short, man. My model over here is saying that you need to go long and do this and blah, 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 and the loopy loop and pull harmonic bat pattern, blah, blah, the sonar lunar cycle. And, and you get influenced by that because you're not confident. You need to have so much conviction with your model that you just, you, you, you just literally, you don't even want to argue with somebody else. You're like, yeah, no, okay, go do what you want to do, man. Anytime someone tries to argue with me on where I take a, sh a short or a long, I just, <laughs> that's the beauty of trading, man. You can be right. I can be right. I can be wrong. You can be right. 
we both are still going to make money if we stick to a singular model by the end of the week, by the end of the month, by the end of the quarter, by the end of the year. So yeah, you can be right. <laughs> I can be wrong. Sure, but I'm not fighting with you. That's why you see a lot of people on social media. If they try to project a belief down your throat, if they try to project a singular way of looking at these charts down your throat because they're so insecure, there's probably they're probably talking to the mirror. They're probably like, oh, because they want you to believe. So I don't want you to believe. I don't. I want you to go back test this yourself and just practice this. <laughs> Audit me. Aaron Williams, $51. Lower the music. <laughs> there you go. Bro, I had to turn up the music, man. I was hyped. There you go. Good trade. Let's celebrate. Um. Nice. 52 duck bucks. Jason pocket. Yes, sir. Jones TP hit exit all. Yes. Make sure you click that exit all button. I can't tell y'all how many times, <laughs> how many times, uh, people will get into trades and then forget to click that exit all button and close out their stop losses and take profit. No, so this is the most important part of price, or this is the most important part of, of learning what, what price is teaching you right now is people are going to hit this profit. So back to Louise's question, are you finished? Is they get a win, they extract value from the markets and they don't know when to stop. They don't know to stop acting like a gambling addict. Like you're addicted to these charts, like somebody that goes into the casino, hits it big and doesn't know when to stop, doesn't know when to stop gambling however you want to view it and put an analogy to it you don't know when to stop i'm done but what about the second time it retraces the third time it retraces what if are you going to take a position down here no i'm done i am 1000 percent done for the day and i'll wait until tomorrow and i'll wait and again i'll wait until my setup happens you guys literally see me right here i was like nope i don't care i'm not going to fomo into a, a market open candle because that goes against my rules I'm not going to FOMO into a news candle because that goes against my rules. I'm not going to sit here and force a trade because that goes against my rules. I'm going to wait. And if it hits that midnight open, done for the day anyways. You have to have that mentality. You have to have that discipline. I'm telling you guys. Exactly, DBP. Done for the day. Jones, thank you so much for your work. Absolutely. I love doing this. I would not do it any other way. Deep and deeper. <laughs> My first live account. I'm using PA, but I only, but I'm only no learning when to take the trade. Thanks so much, bro. Absolutely, man. Good work getting your PA account. I messaged an Insta trader who made 21k in a day the other day and asked him in the comments to trade live. Then, as anyone can win, looking back, blocked. <laughs> yep. You see people like that all the time. Oh yeah, dude. Um, you know, uh, looking at these charts, I could have went long, you know, here, you know, yeah, you could have taken this long here, stop loss right here, uh, targeted right here and look, yeah, it hit, it hit right there. Okay. But can you do that live? Oh, dude, dude, get out of here. Stop hating. Stop being a hater. <laughs> or you'll get those people. You create content on YouTube. Show me your track record. Show me your track record. Show me your track record. Um, I've been live streaming for now going on a year straight. I've been streaming Tuesday through Thursday or three days a week consistently for almost a year now in my discord. Like what more? Like I I'm, I'm calling price live. What, what do you need? What, what more do you need? <laughs> like I, I took these trades. 
<laughs> I, I said exactly when I was going short. Those people, they're never going to be happy. Like, the people that are like, oh, show me your track record. Show me your... Show me your track record, bro. Can, can Are you doing this? Call Price live for a year and then come talk to me. Go live, go live for a year in front of random people in the internet and say exactly when you're going to get into a trade and when you're going to out and also showing your losing trades. Here's the music. <laughs> 18120. Uh, what do you mean 18120? Arcs. Is that where your target is? I don't know what you mean. Thanks for the breakdown. Very much appreciated. Back to back testing. Yes, sir. Collected value from the markets. We we literally all you're doing when you're live trading, this is the game. And then the practice is back testing. Go practice how you preach. Practice what you're going to do when the and when the game comes. When the when the whistle blows, how are you going to execute on the court? That's all we're doing. And when we're done, we're not going to stay on the court and try to look for other plays. The game's over. We won. We don't need to sit here and keep on giving our time for no return. We're going to go back and practice. We're going to back test. We're going to collect more data. We're going to learn and study. We're going to watch tapes of the other teams. AK, we're going to go back and watch the tapes of Price and read it. That's how you become better. But what is the what does most people want to do? Most people want to celebrate, celebrate the win, and then just focus on the game. Focus on the dopamine hits. Focus on the, the crowd cheering them. Focus on all this dopamine stuff, but they don't think about all the work and the unsexy stuff that that person had to do to get to that point. Do you know how much stuff Kobe Bryant done off the camera? Do you know how much practice Kobe Bryant done off, off the court, off of all the, the celebration? Put in a lot of freaking work to become one of the best, most talented basketball players known to man. That's what you have to have. You have to have that mentality. You have to be obsessed. And then and only then are you going to start to see progress in, in what you do. But if you don't choose and treat this like an obsession, a business, if you don't become unhealthily obsessed with the charts, you may it, this may not be for you. And you have to find sexy in the unsexy. Copy trader just got the, got their win and dipped, and that's why the viewing number. That's all right. I mean, I'm on stream for now, going on two hours. I don't. I. I mean, I don't want to call everyone copy traders. People do have jobs and stuff, so I. You know, I, I don't. I. I totally understand if people don't want to listen to me talk and yap for two hours. <laughs> I don't have that ego. <laughs> uh, yeah, eighteen one twenty. I mean, it, dude. I. It could. I. I don't care now, <laughs> dude. I'm telling you, I am the most boring person when it comes to projecting where price is going to go. I am an expert. I, like, I'm not an expert, but I am wanting to become an expert and hone my craft of this right here. This singular jab, right? If I practice one jab 10,000 times, I'm going to be better than the person that practiced 10,000 jabs once, right? So I am becoming very good at this way of trading. I don't care about future price. I don't care where price could most likely go. I, I don't know. So could it come to 18, 18 120? I mean, sure. It's, it's right here. But the how statistics align with what I'm seeing, if if I wanted to kind of do a, the, the rest of the day kind of scenario, the statistics have told me that we have now came 0.86% and distributed 0.86%. So now for the rest of the morning from 1030 to to noon EST, so what is that? One and a half hours, two hours, the rest of the day. What is <laughs> math in front of people? Uh, Eleven thirty, yeah, one and a half hours. Can't do math. In one and a half hours left of price, what statistics are telling me is that this is most likely in this area, not this exact price, but this area is the max that price will extend and distribute to on a Monday. Now, could it go further? Absolutely. I don't care. But statistically speaking, this is where price wants to stop 
because it done its max distribution for the morning, then in the afternoon it can do whatever it wants to do. It could distribute even lower. It could distribute even higher, but we have a 0.55% distribution max um, for the Monday distribution. So, I mean, it, who knows? It could distribute down here. It could distribute here. It could distri but it will, statistically speaking, make a 0.55% distribution on average in any, in any on the PM session of Monday. So do that with what you will, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Wes, let's say you're looking for shorts and you're in a couple of DCAs, but price is bouncing around a bit, staying inside a range, but you get a couple of bearish distribution alerts. Would you still add more DCAs or wait till it leaves the range? Nope. Adding to the adding to the positions, Wes. And and again, that goes into the into the into the mindset of just constantly wanting to over optimize or wanting to look at other little things that aren't with the strategy, right? Like because it's subjective, right? Your range may be my correction, right? Like it's price is fractal. So even if it's like in a range, I don't care. I'm I'm adding as long as it's not a market open candle or a news candle, I'm building my position because the way I look at it is the more positions that I build and it's even going in my favor, I'm just adding to a winning position. So I'm going to make more money when I get my statistic 25 points. Or if I go into drawdown, Good, because now I'm adding to my position up here and price has to move less to make more. Great start of the week, building up another streak. Yes, sir. You get so much value for free. Holy crap, psychology over edge. Dude, that's all it is. I'm, I've been I've been saying this since day zero of, uh, of when I've been creating content here with trading is if you if your mind is not solid, if your mind is not strong, just like a muscle, you will collapse on these charts. Because the funniest thing ever is when people want to sound sexy and 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 edgy, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, psychology is not it's it's the edge." Every single time someone tries to argue with me that psychology is not more important than the edge, they pr they accidentally prove that psychology is more important than the edge. They're like, but Austin, all you need is an edge. You just have to be disciplined on sticking to the edge. You just have to stick to that edge. And then that edge is what makes you money. Okay. Well, how do you become disciplined? So you just, you just said that you have to become disciplined. So the discipline, <laughs> the discipline to use the edge is what's going to drive the edge, right? Well, no, it's the, e and then they just, then they just tear themselves apart. It's psychology runs the edge. Your mind is what's telling you to stick into that trade. Even when you're in a drawdown, your mind is what's telling you to not over trade. Your mind is what's going to be the difference between over trading and revenge trading or sticking to your model. Your mind is going to be the difference between letting a strategy play out or a strategy to just you break your rules. Your mind is driving the edge. I would not have got this win if I didn't be disciplined to the model that I trade. You guys understand that? That is trading. That is focusing on what matters. Yes, of course, you need an edge to extract value, but you need to be disciplined for that edge to give you the value. Uh, by the way, I like your natural gas channel strategy, learning to walk when in, learning to walk when not midnight snapping. <laughs> That's good. I like that analogy. But yeah, you, dude, natural gas is great. Natural gas, the, it, it builds a channel statistically almost every single morning, and then it breaks out of that channel, and there's your distribution for the day. Data is king. Why I'm on the three I'm almost at midnight. You can't make this up. Why? I mean, dude, yeah, guys, go use my midnight snap. This is a free indicator. Go to my description of my video. Get this indicator for free. You said YM. As long as you have data telling you that you're going to consistently move to this area. Look at this. If I go to the one hour time frame. 
You can't make this up. <laughs> You're right. Let's see what the data tells us. Let's let it load here. Come on. Come on, it's getting stage fright. It's getting stage fright. 62.9% of the chance, right? 62.9% of the time out of 2.8 years of data, YM or Dow Jones has retraced to the midnight open from 8 to 11.15 a.m. EST. And so Philip is saying he's trading this on the three-minute time frame, so let's go to the three-minute. I like this. For those of you that are still here, drop in the in the live chat something that is different from what I'm trading. If, if you're trading YM, MES, uh, US 500, the S&P, whatever, let me know. Gold. I know Anya likes to trade gold. Let me know in the chat what you guys are trading and on, on what time frame, and I'll show you guys. Like this, You can't make this stuff up. And how many points are you shooting for? So if you're trading YM, you had your first entry on the three-minute here at 10.03, Usually people that are trading YM, you're targeting 50 points because that's the statistical price movement. And you already, I mean, you you, you hit a full take profit already with 50 points. Um, if you were using liquidity footprints, again, you cannot make this stuff up. Starting at 8 o'clock, you would have had this footprint right here drawn. You would have had this footprint right here drawn just in case it breaks through that footprint. We never reacted off this one, so we would also have had the 8 o'clock one drawn as well as we created that one. You would go down, if you were trading it on the 3-minute time frame, you'd be waiting for a rejection outside of the footprint. You got that rejection right about here with the bearish distribution, so you'd still have hit a full take profit. If you did a single entry right here, stop loss above the protected high, take profit targeting midnight open, you'd be shooting for a 2.86R. I mean, you can play this so many different ways you just have to stick to one of them and they're all playing out but on their different ways if you're doing a single entry you got to be okay with with taking some losses uh because you're going to get whipped out sometimes but that's just the name of the game but you're going to get more risk to reward you're going to win more in the trade if you're trading the dca method you can take dcas off of liquidity footprints as well you could have you could have dca'd once here DCA twice here and then got your 50 points. You do, if you're a part of the pack trade group and you have my indicator, you can take DCAs off of the leptocurtic distributions of price. Like, dude, I can keep talking about this all day long. We can keep going down all the different ways you can trade this and still have profitability with the edge. <laughs> you know, you just got to do one and stick to one of them. Terrible habits destroy the best strategies all day long. Exactly, Danny. Exactly. Uh, 50 points. Yep, got the analysis. Dude, Philip, see? 50 points. Done. And look at look at MNQ. If we know that on Monday we have a 0.86% percentage of distribution, look at where price stopped. And now it's consolidating. Like it's, you can't make this up. This is where price loves, this is what price loves to do. All right, guys, I'm going to do a little workshop for my pack trade group. Then I got the workshop at 7 p.m. EST. So if you want the free workshop, all you got to do is click that link in the description below. Join my discord. Okay, so you're going to go to this discord here. You're going to get hit with a welcome message when you join. You're going to scroll all the way to the top, go to the events, click the interested tab so that way you're notified. We got 69. That's my favorite number. So we we uh, click the interested tab. And you'll be notified each one of these. 7 p.m. EST. This will convert to whatever your local time frame it, time zone is every single day, Monday through Friday this week. We're going to have a, a, a workshop. I'm about to do a workshop, though, for my pack trade group members uh, right after this live stream. So I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. 
And like I say at the end of all my live streams, all of my videos, all of my sessions, stay grinding on your goals and never let anyone tell you that you can't do something they have never done themselves. And I will see you guys later.